In this edition of Channel Radio, we will take a look at NX12 convergent modeling. We're looking at technologies that support generative design processes. Convergent modeling technology is one of those. In NX11, it was a large step forward and we've seen additional enhancements in NX12. It is a core part of our additive manufacturing strategy. What we found is that there are many workflows in additive that require the use of faceted geometry. For example, in a normal workflow, you run a part through topology optimization and you receive a faceted body that you then have to turn back into a usable part. With convergent modeling, this process is easier than ever before because the same modeling techniques and features used to create native CAD geometry can now be used on facet geometry. And in many cases, you can completely remove the rework stage and the use of the output topology optimization directly in your NX model. If you've worked with scan 3D data in the past, you know how painful it can be to make it usable. Non-prismatic shapes in particular require extensive reverse engineering steps so that they can be used for 3D printing, mold design, analysis, and other just standard design uses. Convergent modeling in NX12 reduces the need for this rework by bringing the scan data in as facets, so there's no need to map surfaces, create solids, or do any other manual shape creation. You can scan your data and immediately begin building supports for 3D printing, creating models based on the shape, including it in an assembly, analyzing it, or performing any other modeling operations that you would normally do with CAD data. Needless to say, convergent modeling represents a huge savings in time and cost, and it eliminates the error-prone rework phase. Whether you're designing medical devices, retail or apparel products, or utilizing clay models for styling and design, convergent modeling is a critical tool for creating facet shapes more quickly and with fewer errors than any product on the market. Today I have two demonstrations to show you. The first one is using a scanned knee for use in a medical device that is used in surgery. It's a fixture to hold the knee in place. The second is the pipe assembly that was created using the generative design tool topology optimization. We'll take a look at how we can add additional detailed features onto that. So let's begin and move over to the demonstration and see how this would be accomplished. Let's begin by importing the faceted geometry. We have a knee scan that is in an STL format and you can read that in directly into NX and begin working with it. So we support convergent bodies, NX and NJT. So NX is the traditional STL format that we'll be working in. So you can see as it's brought in, it's it's just one big facet body that, that we'll be working with. And so the converger modeling provides us tools to be able to do that. Things like being able to go in and smooth faces. You can go in and, and do that. So if you find areas that are more rough, you can easily go in. You can use the selection tool real quickly and be able to select those and go ahead and, and smooth those right out of the parts. You can see you can do localized work or you can do that across the entire body. Other things that you might want to do is if, there, if it's a more drastic uh, geometry on there that you might have to, to work or, or to snip out of the part, um, you may want to go in and actually delete that out of there. So if you see here on this body, we've got a, a bunch of facets that are sticking way out on the part, and that might not be something that we want to keep in there. So you can also go in and just snip that information out, select the body that you're working on, and then be able to go in and create the boundary very quickly and go ahead and snip that information out. And so once you have that, you want to be able to, to fill that geometry in the same thing very quickly. So here with the fill hole type, it goes ahead and creates that, that geometry right in 
fills that back in for us. So all of these facet modeling tools you know, speed the process along, be able to work. And as we said, we don't want to be able to have to create all these surfaces and everything over this. We want to be able to use the body just as it is. So also here, you know, we might want to might want to snip off the end and, and then work from that. So again, same thing that we did where the the geometry was sticking up. We'll just go ahead and, and remove that off the end. and then just close that off. And you have different options here. So you saw how we wanted to keep the other section tangent to the geometry that we're working at. Here we might just want to kind of close that information off more in a planar, planar facet since that's going to be used uh, within, the, within the medical fixture as we go on. So now that we're ready, we can go ahead and convert that over to a convergent body. What this will allow us to do is to continue our work and move into other detailed work on the fixture without ever having to, to generate a, a 3D solid, uh, what we would consider a, a traditional 3D solid. And you can see that convergent body is, is part of the history tree here. So if we jump over to, to our fixture, Again, as we mentioned, this is for when someone has to go through uh, knee surgery. And so what we have then is, you know, the knee, the knee joint, they want to put that in and actually set that up so they can, can trim that uh, and have a personalized uh, fixture right for, for your body. So with something like that, we can, we can go ahead and link that geometry uh, into into the part, perform other operations on that as well. So what you see here is, you know, we still have the information, we have our linked bodies, and this is a convergent body, and this is a standard, you know, B-rep geometry. So being able to work with both of those with operations where you might want to go ahead and offset uh, geometry. We might want to offset some faces here. So the offset works right on the, the actual convergent body. We didn't have to do any changes to it. We're just using our normal offset body on there. So we're doing offset face and we're going with the size that we have. And from that then, we can use that to actually then subtract that information right from our fixture. Okay, so what you can see within a couple quick moves, we brought in, we brought in the STL file, which was faceted information. We dropped that in. We did some cleanup. It wasn't uh, completely that we just wanted to use that and throw that in and subtract it. There was a, a couple steps there, but it was very quick and, and painless with the reverse engineering tools. And then being able to pull that together with the B-Rep geometry and actually go ahead and perform normal modeling functions right on the convergent body and cut that uh, to get the, the part that you see on the screen. So if we, if we look at that for a second, Right, you can see the the depth and the detail that's on there. If uh, you needed to make a change to that, maybe that offset was a little bit too much. We want to we want to dial that back some. You can go ahead and do that as well. So even with all of this work, you can see how you can go in, work on it, get the get the job done, you know, quickly, without all of that rework that might be associated with this normally. So. There we have it. We've done some basic convergent modeling uh, with the facet geometry that came in, you know, from our from our medical scan. All right, let's move on to our next example. I think you'll recognize this one from our generative design session, where we took this assembly and 
converted this into just a single component with our generative design using the topology optimization for designers. So as we talked about in the intro, this creates a faceted body. So we didn't have all the grooves and the holes to connect this pipe up to the rest of the uh, assembly. So what we'd like to do now is be able to go in and pull those things through. So as we mentioned, you know, we have the tools to convert that into a faceted body so that we can use all of our regular modeling tools on that. So we can quickly do that, make that generation, and then go into this particular one and start to copy any of the faces that we want. So in this in particular instance, we want to go in and grab this groove geometry here. So we'd like to take this, this information and then maybe use this information at the bottom here for the, the holes. So literally you can do just the, the copy and pasting that into the other file. So you can see here's here's the bodies, the geometry that we're, we're working from. And with that then, if we need to extend those surfaces or do any work on that, you know, we can easily and quickly do that with with the extend sheet. And once you have that, instead of doing a, a normal subtraction, we can just go in and, and trim that with this tool. So here we have a convergent body, and we're using the, the trim body to remove that information from there. So you can see now we've got the same groove in the part based on, on the original design. Same thing now, we can go ahead and, and do that work for the holes. So you can use your standard uh, modeling hole feature and you can come in and use those uh, as a reference location for the additional holes that go in here. So now you see that you have a, a mixture of that convergent geometry but yet we're still going in and doing normal modeling type features to the part and you'll see that you have those within the within the history tree so we can go back make changes to those values, update, any anything else that we need there. So we're using those kind of modeling features, pulling from the other design into this. Now another area that we might want to get into is be able to put some what we consider in standard modeling would be a you know a chamfer or blend type feature. With the facet geometry you really don't have that hard edge on there to work from. So what you get into now is you're really doing a transition. And so what we'd like to do is work within our, our polygon modeling tools. So what this allows us to do is just go in and put those types of transitions in there. So maybe we can work in this full mode now as we go in. So one of those things that you can do is create transitions. And so we do call them rounds or flats, but it's a little bit different than what you would consider, you know, a traditional chamfer or blend on the on the geometry. So here, really what you're looking for is, you know, starting to select out, you know, along that edge, what is that what is that geometry there that we might want to generate. And so you can see the system is automatically figuring out where is that facet edge that we want to put on there. And so in this case, you know, we'll put that flat across across the end there. So you can see how that's it's created that flat on there using the polygon modeling tools. Other things that you might get into is, you know, inside when you have uh, the holes like that, you know, you might want to be able to put that transition there as well. So we might want to round that round that off as we go through here. So what you can see is as we're selecting and, and working through, it's gone ahead and generated the information around there. The system automatically picked up those faces and went ahead in and, and put that rounding on, on that. So again, in a quick manner, without having to try to figure out how to resurface this organic shape or try to put any details on there, we've been able to go back in and generate standard features, grooves, holes built right into the part going in and putting you know those transitions that we might need in there all within the single environment to be able to quickly do that. 
So we've seen how easy it is to use the convergent modeling whether you're getting 3D scans like the bone example from a medical application or you're doing topology optimization and simplifying down your design. But let's go ahead and look at what those benefits are for con using convergent modeling. First off, it's integrated. You're working in that, a single system and you can work seamlessly with the B-Rep geometry, the facet geometry. We saw that in both cases, whether it was the fixture and the bone, being able to size it and subtract it and have your tooling very quickly, or to the topology optimization where we wanted to build in other features that came right off the, the original design and build those into the convergent model. We could copy and paste those in and perform standard operations against those. Also, your reuse. You don't have to convert the facet body into the surface and solids in, a, in order to use your standard modeling tools. In the past, this was a big reverse engineering task. You had to go in and create surfaces, try to build up a good solid model that then could be used in the modeling environment. We didn't do that at all here. We were able to take those convergent bodies and operate right on them. So, you, as you can imagine, because of those two things, you know, you're having massive time savings the, over the traditional reverse engineering process. The speed with which you can get to your design has been drastically improved over traditional methods. So, when we talk about, you know, product packaging, convergent modeling is part of our parasol modeling kernel. So, it is functionality that is part of NX. So there isn't a specific function that you're going to buy or that you're going to add on to the tool. You're going to have that capability inside of NX. And this was brand new for NX11 and as we mentioned enhanced in NX12. But there are upsell opportunities. You'll notice that there is both a Mach 3 bundle as well as a sticky add-on. So this is really to enhance around our additive design with Convergent. So you have all the capabilities of a Mach 3 product design, but now you're getting into more advanced capabilities. So being able to work with the polygon models, some of the cleanup that we did, and some of the specific additive design checks, those are the things that you start to upsell to. So trying to push them into a Mach 3 bundle as opposed to maybe just you know staying with some of your standard uh, standard bundles that you might be looking to sell them and as we mentioned you know if the customer already uses NX and they would like to get the additional capability the sticky add-on is a good place to to go from there so definitely check the price book more details and information or ask questions to the sales team and in our group our enablement team and we'd be happy to help you finally the the question comes up you know where can I get collateral to actually show this and so first off sales center is that location under the NX 12 release information there under the demonstration section there are multiple examples for convergent modeling here for NX 12 so there are things that even global shaping takes advantage of it that you could use convergence. So there's some demo, there's a demo example for that. Some of the things that we did here with subdividing or trimming and filling in, uh, snipping and filling in, uh, the local offsets that we've done and transitions, there's a, a number of examples there on that site, as well as doing some of the facet body cleanup that we showed on the knee example. So that's one segment. The other then is there is a global sales initiative and this is medical design powered by convergent modeling. So as you can see this is a very good area for sales to go after the, the med device, uh, medical industry. You can see the number of scans and things that would be brought in and being able to eliminate all those extra steps. So on the page that you have with the link here there is a sales playbook, so a lot of information around what you need to do to, to continue to push this forward, as well as a overview presentation and demo collateral. So 
whether you use the demo movie in there or you use some of the demo examples that we listed out above those would be a good example to to put in front of your customers and then finally you know our learning center under uh, Saba there's plenty of additional learning opportunities for NX12 that you can go in we've had some PLM cafes and we've had product management present and and show some additional examples there as well so plenty of opportunity to learn and use some of the collateral that we have created and should be a, a lot of information that you can take to your customer base so I thank you for your time today appreciate you looking at convergent modeling and we wish you good selling thank you